In this video, we're going to introduce tautologies, contradictions, and contingent whoops. So by the end of this video, you should be able to answer the following three questions and state whether or not each of these is a tautology, a contradiction, or a contingent well-formed formula. So let's get into it. We say that a well-formed formula is a tautology if it is always true. That means that no matter what row in the truth table we look at, the output for the final woof, the complex woof, will be true. So, for example, if we have p or not p, we can set up this truth table. So, we give the p10 options. There's only one well-formed formula here, or one atomic proposition. So, we just need two rows. Now, the negation of p is going to flip the truth values. So, instead of 1, 0, we get 0, 1. And now we do p or not p. So, we're going to get information from this column, information from the third column, and if at least one of those is true, we get true for the entire well-formed formula, p or not p. Both of these are true. So we can see that in our final column for p or not p, this is always true. Therefore, this shows us that this well-formed formula is a tautology, which means no matter what situation we're in, this is always going to be true. Uh, let's do p or op. So here's another one. Let's set up this truth table. So 1, 0, 1, 0 for p. Uh, what do we know about the conditional? It is only false when we have one arrow zero. So in the first row, we have one arrow one, it's true. In the second row, we have zero arrow zero, it's true. Therefore, much like our first example, we have all ones in our final column for the well-formed formula. Therefore, it is a tautology. It is always true. So I use these simple formulas because it shows us what we need to see. If you use a complex formula, say with uh, eight rows, if you see ones in all of those eight rows, it's a tautology. Now, sometimes you'll see this written as a T, and sometimes you'll be seeing this as what's called the verum, coming from the word veracity for truth. So it's a T with like a, a little bit shorter of a stick on top. Okay, the next one is contradiction. So a contradiction is always false. So let's set up our truth tables again for p and not p, so we can get our not p ready. Okay, so now for and, we're taking information from the first column and the third column here, and it's only going to be true when both of those are true. But in this case, in the first row, we have one zero, so this will be false, and in the second row, we have zero one, and that's false. Therefore, if we take a look at this final column here, it's all zeros, therefore we have a contradiction. So all zeros mean it's always false. No matter which situation we're in, this is always going to be a false statement. Uh, here's a more complicated one. In fact, I should give a little bit more space when I do this, but we'll see how this goes. So we're gonna put ones for P, uh, one, one for Q. So our beginning truth tables will look like this. We're just setting it up. Okay, first we're going to do Q arrow P. So remember the conditional is false only when we have one arrow zero. So uh, we'll get one, one, zero, one. Because in this third row, the third row is where we have one arrow zero, so that'll be false. And the rest of them, it'll be true. Uh, now let's do P arrow, Q arrow P. So we're going to take information from this column and information from this column here. So in the left to right direction. And it's only false when we have one arrow zero but we don't have one arrow zero in any of these cases. Uh, we just have ones for each of these rows. We have one arrow one, one arrow one, zero arrow zero, and zero arrow one, which are all true. Okay, finally, we're gonna negate it. So we're negating this row or this column right here for the entire thing, P arrow, Q arrow, P. So because that's all ones, our negation here is going to give us all zeros. And because in the final column, we have all zeros. Uh, we know then that this is a contradiction. So we might see this written as an F in some systems or what's called the falsum. So this is like an upside down T. It's the opposite of the verum. It comes from the word false. So another thing that we could see here is that uh, before we did negation, we had a column with all ones. So this part right here, this part is a tautology. So we found through doing this 
that p arrow q arrow p is a tautology. And then when you negate a tautology, you get a contradiction. So for example, if we put a not outside of p and not p, what we'd end up with are ones on the outside negating that contradiction. And that would tell us that this then would be a tautology if we take the negation of a contradiction. That's an interesting little thing you can find. Now, every other well-formed formula that is not a contradiction, not a tautology, is called contingent. That means it's true in one scenario and false in another. So basically we see a one and a zero somewhere in that final column. So if we set up the truth table for P or Q, well, we know the truth table for P and Q. We've done this quite a few times. So it's true if at least one of those are true. So it's true in the first three rows and false in the last. So taking a look at this final column, in fact, let me make it a little bit straighter and not get in the way of the numbers. Because we see at least one one and we see at least one zero, uh, we know that this is then what is called contingent. So it's contingent on the inputs. So whether P is true, whether Q is true or false, like that's what makes it decide if it's a true woof or a false woof. Let's do this again with this more complex one. And this one might take a little bit more time to complete, but that's okay. This is all about demonstration and about making sure that we get the process. So I'll start with the negation of not P. So this is just going to reverse the truth values for P. So instead of 1100, zero, zero, we get 0011. Zero, zero, one, one. Uh, next, we have to do P arrow Q. So that's going to be a 1011 one, one truth table. So this is just simple stuff. Well, simple if we've watched the previous few videos. We've done this quite a few times already. Uh, now for AND, P and P arrow Q, we're taking information from column 1, information from column 4, and we need both of these to be true. Uh, but that's only going to be the case in the first row. And the next three rows, these are going to be false. So we had 1, 1 in the first row, uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 1 in the 2, 3, and 4th rows. Okay, so at this point, we just have one more comparison to make, which is the arrow. So that is going to come from our not P table, and it's going to come from our AND table. So remember, the arrow is false when we have 1, arrow 0. In the first row, we have 1, arrow 0, so it's false. But then in the second, third, and fourth row, we have zero arrow zero, which is true. And our third and fourth row, we have zero arrow one, which are both true. So our final column consists of both zeros and ones. So uh, this is a contingent well-formed formula. In fact, looking at every single column in this truth table, all, all of the well-formed formulas we've made along the way are contingent, because all of these rows have ones and zeros in each. So that's tautologies, contradictions, and contingent well-formed formulas. Let's do one more example. And this time I want you to figure out what type of formula it is. Is it a tautology, a contradiction, or a contingent? Okay, let's fill this out. Uh, let's start with B or A. So this is just going to be our 1110 truth table. We've seen this a few times. So B or A is done. Uh, let's do not A now. So not A is just going to flip the value of A. Uh, not B is going to do the same thing. So we're going to flip the values of B to get 0, 1, 0, 1 instead of 1, 0, 1, 0. And now we're going to do the arrow. So it's only false when we have 1, arrow, 0. So it's going to be true in the first row. That's 0, arrow, 0. Uh, 0, arrow, 1 in the second row. That third row is going to be 1, arrow, 0. So that's false. And that fourth row is going to be 1, arrow, 1. And that info was taken from those two columns there. Okay, now we have one more thing to do. We have to fill out our final column. So that's going to take information from the arrow here for not A, arrow, not B. And it's going to take information from B or A. So remember, this is going to be true only if both of these are true. So in the first row, we have 1 and 1. That's true. In the second row, we have 1 and 1. That's true. In the third row, we have 0 and 1. So one of those is false, so we'll get a 0 here. And in the fourth row, we have one and zero, so we have zero. So this is our final column for the well-formed formula. We see both ones and zeros. So it is a contingent well-formed formula. Okay, that's it for 
histologies, contradictions, and contingent well-formed formulas. At this point, you should be able to solve these three questions, so there will be a solution video posted 24 hours after this video comes out with solutions for these. If you have any questions, as always, post them in the comments below. Or, um, well, I guess that's where you post your questions, isn't it? <laughs> I was going to say go on Reddit, but I haven't used that for ages. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it, share it, and I will get back to you as soon as I can.